Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 62. Now, I've just got back from teaching at Photoshop World in Las Vegas, which was incredible, but that explains why there wasn't an episode last week. So now that I'm back in the UK, I'm kind of diving in there straight away to get this episode up and online for you. Now, this is a really, really quick technique. It's one kind of similar to what I've showed many weeks ago now in episode 26 to show how you can match the color between the foreground and the background when you're doing compositing. And what I mean by that basically is whatever it is that you're cutting out, helping the color of that to match the scene that you're putting it into so that everything looks much more realistic and believable. So definitely check out episode 26 if you haven't seen that. But here's another technique for showing how to do it just by using opacity. And this is one that I learned when I was out at Photoshop World before my class. Um, my good friend Pete Collins from Kelby One actually showed me this. So big up to uh, Pete for showing me this. Now before we dive into the tutorial, like always, make sure if you haven't already that you subscribe to the channel. That's all the support I ask. And obviously just let other people know about this channel as well just by clicking that uh, like or the share button or whatever means you can just let other people know about it but hey that's enough from me let's dive into the tutorial All right, so I'll show you on this picture here then how we can actually make the foreground elements and the background matching so everything looks like it was originally there. The color is one of those things that really gives it away and makes things not look quite right. So if we can get that sorted, we're well on the way to making a believable composite picture. All right, so here's a, here's a picture here of a rhino that I put in. This is a picture I made some time ago. This is actually gonna be the cover of my book which is coming out in uh, well, you now Christmas 2014. So excuse the shameless promotion there, but the way that I did it in the picture was using this layer over here called Match Color. And that's on the video that I've already explained in the intro. So if you haven't seen it, definitely check that video out, episode 26. But if I zoom in and show you, if I turn off that Match Color layer, you may well be, in fact, let's just turn off the top layer. That's got all the coloring uh, changes that have been done. But if I turn on and off this Match Color layer, I'm hoping that you're gonna see on your screen here how the rhino goes from being quite warm to then kind of like more natural kind of um, realistic coloring for the scene he's in so that's one way of doing it now this other way is one that I learned when I was out teaching at Photoshop World in Las Vegas last week and it was my good friend Pete Collins from Kelby One who actually showed me it it's very very simple very effective and I actually think this is what I'm going to end up turning to a lot more than the average blur technique in episode number 26 and this is so stupidly easy to do. All we do, here's the layer containing the Rhino cutout. Now, all I'm going to do is go to the opacity at the top of the layer stack. So this is the opacity for this layer and knock it down to 90%. So it goes from 100 to 90%. And straight away, it takes on the kind of look and the feel of the environment that the rhino is in. And what I really love about it is how it almost adds kind of like a bit of a hazy mist to it, which is perfect for images that are kind of like a little bit of a distance into the picture, like the rhino is in here. So now that I've zoomed out, if I take it to 100%, and then down to 90%. Now obviously there's a limit to how far you can lower the opacity on this layer. If you start going too far, you're gonna to start to make him transparent and you're gonna start, start to see anything in the picture that is actually behind the rhino. So what I'm finding is that 90, maybe 85 at a push, but certainly 90% has a great kind of like effect on the picture. So again, one more time we go from 100% down to 90%. For me, it really, really does seamlessly add the rhino into the picture. And like I said, I'm definitely gonna be using this on a lot more of the composites that I do from this point onwards.